great. Welcome everyone. Thank you for coming um, to this climate focus. Um, Derek will be joining us and um, he's just been voting uh, just and had a little bit of a problem with his Zoom account. So I'm sure he'll jump onto the call any minute. Um, we're really glad to be hearing from Mel, from Melanie, who's joined us today um, to hear all about the investment into the Cornwall bus networks. And Melanie, we're so glad to have you. Um, so I wonder if you're happy for me to hand over to you so we can hear about um, all about the project and then we're going to have a time of discussion and we can all ask our questions afterwards. Um, so uh, you can either write them in the chat or just save them and we, we can chat together afterwards. Um, uh, we can go around and invite you all to give your questions if you want to as well. So you don't need to write them if you don't want to. Yeah, Mel, I'll hand over to you. Super, thank you. And um, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Mel Watson. Um, I lead the public transport team here at Cornwall Council. Um, and I wanted to give you um, a bit of background um, and talk about our latest bus fares pilot um, that, that we only launched last week. Um, so if I, it's probably about 10 to 15 minute presentation. Um, so if I run through that, um, and then happy to take any questions and have a bit of a discussion um, at, at the end, if that's okay with everybody. So if I just share my screen, so please bear with me. Brilliant. Hopefully you can all see a big sort of screen with two buses and make big savings by bus. Brilliant. Super. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I'm just going to work out how I move the screen forward. Just give me a second. Sorry about this. I just I don't use Zoom. I've not used it for some time. Ah, is, ah that's changed, hasn't it? Brilliant. So that's me. I've already said that. So if we go on, just to give you a little bit about our journey um, that we've been making over the last few years. So it very much started off back in 2015, where Cornwall Council secured our devolution deal for transport. And that led to a significant uplift in investment in public transport for the county. Um, and we introduced the concept of one public transport system for Cornwall. And this included quite um, a significant investment in BOSS, um, but also investment in rail across the county um, that I'm sure you've heard about and experienced um, with the new trains um, and improved um, network that we've got um, in, in Cornwall. On the bus side, as part of that work, we also secured in £35 million worth of investment from the operators, the bus operators, um, and that's um, in brand new buses that have come in over the last, well, since 2015, they've drip fed in. In particular, we've had 102 new buses come in more recently in the last two years during the pandemic. Um, these are all low floor, low, low emission Euro 6 buses. We've also had investment in new depot facilities um, and also in terms of drivers. So drivers have gone through enhanced driver training um, and become much more customer focused over the last couple of years. And just as the pandemic hit, it was fantastic timing. We introduced our eight year local bus service contract. Now, this is quite innovative. It's the first time a local authority has really made that long term commitment to its tendered network. Um, and in Cornwall, it is a significant tendered network. We, we subsidise 50% of the mileage here in Cornwall. So only 50% is commercially viable um, and Cornwall Council um, subsidises the rest. So we've got quite a say in the bus services that, that are delivered in, uh, uh, across the county. Obviously the pandemic hit um, and that has decimated services um, and we're now coming through that um, and we've got some challenges ahead um, but also some, some really great news um, in terms of um, the bus fares pilot. But just before the pandemic hit, um, I think this is useful context. 
Cornwall was actually um, growing patronage, and that is against a national decline of boss patronage. So most authority areas were in decline, whereas we were still growing as a result of the investment we've been making since 2015. Um, and we had some great passenger satisfaction results as well, which have been going up in the last few years prior to the pandemic. We haven't had any recent surveys because we've been unable to um, do those during, during the pandemic. So we're very excited to get some more in and see where we stand later this year. Um, the, the COVID, the pandemic um, hit us very hard. We, um, our passenger numbers dipped massively uh, when COVID first hit. Uh, we, we took a very steep um, decline, uh, but we have had a strong return. It's gone up and down, obviously, as different restrictions have come and gone. But generally, we've been we've been above the national average in terms of our return to patronage. And we're about 65 to 70 percent recovery rates now, um, depending on what what networks you're looking at. Um, so patronage is coming back. Um, we need more people to use bus, but but we're, we're on the, the right track. In October last year, we. In, uh, implemented our bus service improvement plan that came out of the national bus strategy that the government announced earlier in March last year. Um, we put in a really ambitious bid. We, we didn't hold back. Um, we put in a £77 million bid for funding um, over the next three years. Um, we, we are very grateful for the £13.3 million we have been awarded. We are one of a few local authorities that have been awarded funding. Um, it doesn't go far enough, but we are currently working with DFT to work out how that money will be spent um, in the next few years. Um, so it is welcome um, to us, but we'll, al we'll always accept more, shall we say. And that's very much around enhancing the customer experience. All our work is very much evidence led um, and based on customer priorities. And that was very clearly set out in our BSIP, what our customers want, what our customers have said, and also what non-users have said about, you know, why they don't use the bus um, and what have you. And that's around cheap fares, more reliable services, and one set of information. So it's easy to understand where, where what buses go where um, and what have you. Um, we've also just delivered our first enhanced partnership with our operators in line with what government expects us to do. Um, again, we're one of the first in the country to get that over the line. Um, and that came into play um, last week um, when we also launched the bus fares pilot. And it is very much based on the continuation of the one public transport system for Cornwall concept, which is about one network, one timetable, one standard, one brand and one ticket. So it's very clear to the customer um, you know, regardless of which operator is operating the route, they should expect the same levels of standards and service and simplicity so that they understand um, how, how to use public transport. So then to talk, so that was a bit of the background and, and, and sort of context of, of what we're operating in. Now to talk about the bus fares pilot, um, the public facing messaging for this is, is the Make Big Savings by Bus campaign. That, that we've introduced. So hopefully you'll start to see this out and about. Um, I know it's in bus shelters, it's on billboards, it's on TV, it's on radio. Um, so hopefully you'll have started to pick this up. But just to give you some concept, it's, it has been a staged approach to a nationally significant project. So um, we are the only authority in the country that has been given this level of funding to do this at a county-wide level. So we are leading the way um, and we are working very closely with the Department of Transport who are really interested in what this means. And basically the project was given to us to understand whether if you reduce fares, does that bring more people to bus? And if it does, does the enough, do, do enough people come to bus that make it financially sustainable over the longer term? So, you know, the, the core is that we need to get more people onto bus, but we also need to make this project financially sustainable by the end. We can't have a cliff edge whereby at the end of four years, um, we can't afford to continue the low fares. We've got to have generated enough people to make up for the cheaper fares in effect. But what we firstly need to, needed to do was make sure we had joint information in place so that passengers understand 
the bus services on offer. Um, so back in October last year, we introduced our first joint timetable booklets. So we've got two main operators in Cornwall, um, first Kerno and Go Cornwall Bus. They operate, um, well, they carry around 50% of the patronage each. each. Um, Go Cornwall off, operate more mileage, first Kerno operate less mileage. Um, and then we've got a couple of small operators that, that, that sit on the edge. Without joint information, bus fares pilot couldn't happen because we needed to join up the information to make sure that people understood the network, they could see the network as a whole, um, and then they could understand the ticketing as, as a whole. So very much the first point of, was, was getting these timetable booklets and one network map um, introduced. And that just gives you an idea of that. That's our one network map and our timetable booklets that are out there. We're also, we got um, a, a website up and running Transport for Cornwall and Transport for Cornwall is the overarching brand that covers public transport in Cornwall. Um, so it, it is a partnership of the operators, the main bus operators, DWR is the rail operator and Cornwall Council. And the idea, just like Transport for London in London, it, you know, it provides that overarching brand so that if people are interested in public transport, they just need to go there. It's in development um, and we've got a long way to go. We've got to bring up all the web and, app, web and apps um, this financial year as part of our BSIP delivery. You'll start to see more and more joined up information, but we got the basics um, delivered in the autumn. We then needed to look at the ticketing. Um, and at the time, because we've got two operators, you know, you had to work out which bus you were going to use and therefore which ticket you needed. This caused quite a lot of distressed customers. Um, and it was a barrier because people were unclear about, you know, well, what do I need to buy? Um, in January this year, we, we introduced any ticket, any bus, um, which is, as it says, you, you don't need to worry. All tickets are valid on, on all the buses. Um, so you can go to go Cornwall, buy a ticket and then use it on a first bus um, on your return trip, for example. And that took a lot of negotiation, a lot of work behind the scenes to get two commercial operators to accept each other's tickets. We also simplified some of the fares at that point, And we also got some fare reductions in at that point. So if I give you an idea, the first Kerno day ticket was £15 to travel around Cornwall. And in January, we got that reduced to nine pounds um, through, through negotiations with them. We also looked at the child ages. So because different operators had different um, policies in place around what age was a child. And generally a child gets half price tickets, um, but that was only up to the age of 16 for first Kerno, but Go Cornwall allowed up to 19. So we've changed that so that all children up to their 19th birthday are now valid to buy a child ticket. So for 16 to 19 year olds, that's been a big step forward um, for them because they can now access far cheaper tickets. Um, and so th th this, was, this was a real step forward that had never happened before. Um, and over 30,000 passengers have benefited from interoperability um, since January um, th this year. And if I go on and give you a little insight into the um, publicity video that was done for that. Oh, Mel, I don't think there's a, I can't hear it if there's any sound. Oh, can you not? Turned up then. Um, Work <laughs> so, so you couldn't hear anything at all? Not on the video, no. Try, can I try this again? Yeah, it's quiet, but I can hear something now. Oh, 
someone said you might have to take your earphones out, Mel. I don't know if that's... Did, did you hear that? Sorry. Did you get to hear that? A little no. bit, not very much, no. Okay, oh, sorry. There was a um, suggestion that if you take your earphones out, that might work. Yeah, no, I did. I did oh, take did. them out of the computer. Okay. Um, so I, I, I can share this with you, and, and this is available online as well, so, so you can view that. Um, I'm not quite sure. I can't see any way of making it any different because it, it's working perfectly on my machine. So I'm not quite sure why it's not, not transmitting. So apologies for that. Um, so basically this is the publicity that accompanied that video. It's all about this year. So this was in January this year, it's all coming together, any ticket, any bus. Um, and it was really the pre-launch uh, information for, for the bus fares pilot, um, as well as supporting the, the any ticket, any bus um, sort of concept that, that we delivered. Um, and then obviously that led us on to the bus fares pilot that was launched last week. Um, it is very much reductions across most fares um, and, 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 a, and a simplification around some of our single and return fares and also the removal of some of the fares because we had an incredibly complex fare system. Um, so we have tried to simplify it quite significantly. Um, we've added some new town zones where there was anomalies um, across, the, across Cornwall. Um, and we, we've taken forward a, a very large marketing campaign. Let me see, because again, I've got um, the radio ad. So let me see if I can work out how to, how to share that with you. Let's see if this works. I don't know about other people, but I can't hear that. Did, did you hear that at all? Yeah. Can I say, Melanie, I think we're just hearing what your microphone is picking up. Somebody has said in the chat, you need to tick the box to share audio when you share a video. Right, that's Back at the screen where... Um, where uh, it... sound. Right, let me see. Right, so I've just ticked the box. Let me try that again then. Prices are going up everywhere. But yes, bus fares across Cornwall are coming down. From the 10th of April, start making big savings by bus, with many short hop fares reduced by 20% and longer trips by up to 40%. And for just £5 a day, travel on any bus across Cornwall as many times as you want. There's never been a better time to travel by bus. Make big savings by bus from the 10th of April. Visit transportforcornwall.co.uk. T's and C's apply. Not available on park and rides. So that's our radio advert that's currently out. I'm hoping that you might have heard that on some of our local radios already. Prices um, are going... Oh, sorry. And then we've got also the TV advert that is also out. This was launched last week. So let me just share this with you. Bus fares across Cornwall are coming down. Work or school or just heading out... Wherever you're travelling in Cornwall, we'll help you make those connections that really matter. Any bus, any route for just £5 for an adult day or £10 a day for the whole family. 
It's time to make big savings by bus. So that's the TV advert that's aimed very much at new people to try the bus, um, day trips out, um, family trips, um, £10 just for travel for, for a whole family um, for the day. They can go anywhere across Cornwall. Um, so that's very much aimed at non-users. Um, the campaign is quite wide ranging. Um, we've got various social media feeds, we've got billboards, we've got um, bus, state, uh, bus stop um, adverts, um, we've got road shows going round. So buses are visiting centres of our main towns. Um, we've had two this week, we've got two more next week and then we're planning what we're doing beyond that um, to try and engage with the communities um, and make people aware of what we're doing so that we're raising awareness um, and, and what we're looking for is, um, you know, just make one journey, just try the bus. Um, it's a lot cheaper. Petrol prices are going up. Everything's going up. But bus fares have actually come down. Um, and I think the message is if, you, if, if everybody made one trip by public transport, it really starts to uh, make a difference in terms of patronage, um, in terms of the climate. Um, so, so that's very much how, how we're trying to market this. And of course, for current users, it's great value. They're, they're getting much better fares. They've had a reduction in price. Um, in terms of the actual, um, what, what we've delivered, um, short hop fares have been reduced by around 20%, the longer distance journeys by up to 40% because they were quite expensive and some of our bus journeys are quite long in Cornwall. Uh, we are a rural authority um, and it does take quite a long time to travel um, from, from place to place. Um, so, so they have had quite a significant discount. And then our multi-journey tickets, um, depending on what they are, they've, they've had a different level of discount. So the countywide day, as I've said, that was £15 back in December, reduced to nine in, in January. And now with the bus first pilot, that is down to just £5 a day to travel anywhere across the whole of Cornwall all day. Um, so that is great value. Um, again, our town zones, uh, which are largely in the urban areas, um, they're down to £2.50. So if you're making local journeys within towns, £2.50 to travel anywhere around that town all, all day um, is great value. And for children, that, that one's £1.50. Um, so again, that, that's quite a big saving. Um, so basically, this is very much cheaper fares for those already travelling. Um, and the idea is obviously to also attract those current non-users to, to try the bus and see how it could work for them. Um, it's simplified the system, which is, which is great. Um, it's what we've looked, we wanted to do. But that's not all. Um, in the summer um, period, probably in July, we're just finalizing the details as we speak. Um, we're going to be introducing what's called tap on tap off ticketing. Um, so all the technology has been fitted to the buses and we're just doing the testing as we speak now. And what that means is that for those of you that have traveled around London, you just take the debit card and you tap on and off buses and the tube and the system in the background works out the best fare for you based on your journeys. So we will have that delivered in Cornwall for the summer period. Um, so that takes away another barrier to people traveling by bus. You don't need to know what ticket you need. You just need to have trust in the system that it will provide the best value fare depending on the journeys you make. Now there is a challenge there for us, we've got to build confidence um, in the people of Cornwall to actually trust the system um, and so we're currently developing another marketing campaign that really explains this um, so that people can start to trust the system um, and, and hopefully get the best value fares that way. And, and all of this, it's about removing barriers to travel, removing barriers to public transport um, and, and, and helping people make more sustainable choices. Um, and, and that's all linked to obviously the, the climate um, change uh, agenda. And, and clearly traveling by bus is far more sustainable. It takes many cars off the road. And obviously being a rural authority, you know, our road network is quite constrained. Um, you know, we don't have wide open roads. Um, we have a lot of country lanes um, and it, they can only take so many cars. We get congestion, we get pollution. It, it's not good for any of us. 
Um, so it is very much where, where there are journeys that can be made by public transport, we, we really want people to think about making those journeys by, by public transport rather than car. And that's linking into obviously our new Cornwall transport plan, which um, again, that went through cabinet in the last two weeks and has been now launched and is live on our website now. Um, and that is very much about putting the climate agenda at the heart of everything that we do. Um, so, you know, that, that, that is clearly there. If you haven't already seen it, do, do go online um, and, and have a look at it. It's, it's a great document um, and it has sort of rebalanced um, what we need to do um, in terms of transport and, and, and its impact on, on the environment um, as we move forward. So just to conclude, um, you know, the Make Big Savings by Boss, um, it, it, is, it is out there now. Um, it's also at, at the same launch of that we launched our enhanced partnership with the operators. So they are now we are now committed to working together and delivering change. Um, we're working on our BSIP allocation with the Department of Transport to determine how best we'll spend the 13 million that they've allocated to us. Um, and all of this is a real opportunity to deliver um, a difference for, for bus users. Cornwall, as a rural authority, does have a great network um, for, for rural bus services. We, we really are fortunate. I know we can always do more, but obviously within the budget constraints we have, we do have a decent network. Um, and, and we really are asking people to, 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 to try the network, try and make one or two journeys on public transport to, to, to help make that difference. Um, and, and all of this is integral to the wider vision and goals linked to the transport plan and our climate change pledge um, and, and the need for change. Okay, I think that's it. I have got um, another video of the launch if you'd be interested in seeing that. Again, that's just a couple of minute video of the launch day and it, it, it just talks about, well, it shows some of our key stakeholders that were there on the day. Um, so if, if you're yes, okay. That, that would be nice to see and we've got the sound now, so. Yes, exactly. So if you just give me a moment, I just need to switch from one thing to another. Um, it, this has gone live today. Um, share screen. So I didn't have time to embed it into the presentation. So let me just find it. It's on our Twitter page. Right, has that come up with another yeah. screen? Yep, yeah. so I'll just, so this, I'm doing this through our Twitter. So it's a bit smaller, but hopefully you'll get the gist. And if you are interested, you can go online and, and find it to watch for yourself. So it's about reducing the cost of bus travel across Cornwall. I mean, this is a UK first. It's a good news story. I mean, in these times when prices are going up, we're bringing them down. Isn't that incredible? We're reducing fares as part of a government funded uh, low fares pilot scheme, which launches today. And we're really excited about it. Fares are going to be dropping to £1.60 single, £2.40 return. In addition to that, we're also launching new town zones uh, across the whole of Cornwall, where you can travel for a whole day for just £2.50. Tap for their ticket to get on any bus and travel anywhere amongst all the bus providers around Cornwall. That enable the bus operators to come together and really put the passenger at the centre of everything that we're doing. That's what partnership working looks like. And Cornwall are doing it in a way that should set a new agenda for the provision of buses in a rural setting across the whole of the UK. Think about the difference you're making to our climate by using buses as opposed to getting in your car. Come and join us, come and, come and, come and use the bus. Mm, thank you. That's it. Thank you, everybody. Apologies for a few technical hiccups, but Happy to take questions. Either put their hand up or you can just go ahead. Oh, Nigel, do you want to go ahead and ask your question? Uh, yeah, hello. Uh, I couldn't welcome what you've said more. Really terrific. Um, at the same time, I think as well as the um, carrot, there has to be the stick as regards demotorization. I really think there has to be, apart from the fuel prices going up, which is just accidental, I think there has to be um, 
actual disincentives to motorists. Uh, one in particular, which would help safety and the environment, is a blanket 20 mile an hour speed limit, not just in zones here and there, which cars ignore, but right within two mile radius, say, of big town centres. Um, and uh, otherwise, a lot of motorists will say, oh, it's great, this cheaper buses make the roads quieter for me. Uh, that is the way a lot of motorists think. There has to be active disincentives to people using the cars, not just the carrot, which is highly admirable what you've done. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and I couldn't agree more. And, you know, as, as part of our bus service improvement plan, as part of the national bus strategy that, that the government have set out, that has been made very clear. Um, so, you know, it's not just about improving buses. They want to see also what are the other sticks, carrots, et cetera, that, that join up um, or all of this. So just to give you an insight into that, as part of our BSIP bus service improvement plan, we have made reference to the positive parking framework, which Cornwall Council actually has already has in place. Um, and this is very much about a wider strategy of how we address car parking, for example, and how we have um, a clear policy whereby town centre in, in the centre parking it is more expensive compared to, to the outer edge parking. Um, and just to give you an insight into that, so Truro, um, we've obviously removed some of the parking for some of the new development um, that is taking place. Um, and we've also removed some of the very, very cheap, um, um, I'm trying to think of the word they called it. Um, it's when you buy parking up front. Um, so um, it, it, it was very cheap and that, that has just all been changed as a starting point, um, clearly for, for, for Truro. We've got the park and ride, obviously that offers very cheap um, bus traveling, you can park for free in two locations outside of Truro and, and then get the park and ride in. So we are, we are you know, absolutely on side with, with that. Um, so that's the parking issue, but that's going to take time to implement over time. And there's some real challenges about getting that thinking embedded in some of the town councils as well, because Cornwall Council doesn't have control of all the car parking. Um, you know, much of it is devolved to our local um, town councils. Um, so we need to really get that message in better out there, better understood. Um, and again, I see events like this, if we can spread the word, if we can start to engage um, the wider communities to, to get that thinking out there, um, to, to try and get, you know, different perspectives um, out there, because parking can be very um, um, sensitive, shall we say. Um, on the speed limits, yes, absolutely. Um, the, the new administration there, they are committed to actually introducing 20 mile per hour zones across the county. Um, and we're actually doing pilot work now um, on that. Um, so, so that is already taking, taking place. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I don't have the exact detail on it. Um, but, but I know colleagues um, in, 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 in Cornwall Council are working on that as we speak, and there will be a pilot rolled out, which will be evaluated, um, and that will inform a wider rollout of 20 mile an hour zones. Thank you. Um, Pippa, we can't hear you. I think, um, sorry. Um, yeah, I was just saying that's really very encouraging. And um, in the chat, Mel, thank you very much. Could you just tell me where I can get hold of a joint timetable? Because I do use the buses when I can. Caroline Snow, you've got your hand up. Did you want to ask a question? Yes, thank you, Pippa. Um, thank you, Melanie. That was really um, positive. And I particularly like the tapping on and tapping off on the bus like you, you do on city buses. And I wondered if you've got any plans to also copy the city buses in having apps for people's phones to tell us um, how long, where the bus is, how far away, how many minutes until it arrives, either for people's phones or maybe 
digital displays on, on bus stops. I don't know if that's possible yes. in, in a rural area. Thank uh, you. Uh, Absolutely. So um, a couple of things there. Um, the timetables are in all our, our bus stations from this weekend. They've been rolled out because we've just had a big timetable change. Um, and they're also online. Um, Transport for Cornwall. Um, you can you can look at all the information there. Um, so in terms of um, the um, sorry, my mind has gone blank. It's the end of the day. Um, sorry, Caroline, what, what, what did you ask again? I knew I should have answered that first. Yeah, it was whether you can have apps on the phone oh, that tells yeah. you where in real life the bus is, you know, whether it's yes. 10 minutes away, five minutes away, that kind of thing. Yeah, Thank you. so we already have that. So um, a lot of our stops have real-time information at them in Cornwall. Um, they're largely the busier stops. Um, so certainly um, in the town, town centres, and on some of the busier routes where we've got a, hand, a, a number of co, uh, bus routes that, that use them, we, we do have real-time information. And that is across Cornwall. We've tried to spread it out as, as far as we can. And we've got an ongoing programme where we will roll more out. Um, there is a national app. So th there's various apps out there. Um, there's one, I was just, I picked it from my phone. So there's something called Bus Checker, uh, which is a national app. So no matter where you go in the UK, you can use that and go into it um, and it will home in on where you are um, and pull up the nearest bus stops and you'll be able to get that from all our services. Um, all, all our bus services are linked in to a real-time system that feeds a national system travel line, um, basically, so you can already go into that. Um, in addition to that, we, we do have um, our two main operators have their own apps. Um, at the moment and you can buy tickets on those apps um, and you can find real-time information. So Go Cornwall Bus and First Kerno both already have apps up and running. Our aim as part of our BSIP funding award is that we create one app so we take data feeds from both so there is one Transport for Cornwall app um, that, that people can use if, if, if they so desire. Um, so there's apps can be quite a crowded market. So there is this national one. Well, there's various national ones, but we, we are still keen um, to just take those data feeds and provide the transport for Cornwall one. And so you'll see that later this year. Seems like you're working on so much, Mel. I can see <laughs> yes. why it's taken it's taken a while, and it's such a long project, isn't it? But yeah, I just can't get over how many different things um, you're doing. There's a lot That's going on. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like it. Um, yeah, really comprehensive. Um, I was just wondering if there's a, is there an overall aim for the project of reducing carbon emissions in terms of, have you got an aim for how many people you want to be using the bus or how many fewer car journeys? Because you know, this group were really interested in like, what is going to be the impact? Is there, is there a goal? Um, so as part of the local transport plan, um, that that's set out some of the challenges um, and to, for us to get to carbon neutral um, it, it's massive changes needed absolutely huge changes needed um, so so that has set out the challenge the the BSIP that we um, put forward to government back in October said that if you give us this 77 million pound package of measures we want to grow patronage by 10 percent um, which doesn't actually sound a lot, um, but that's just for that package of, of measures. Now, we haven't got that, but we're still quite ambitious and we still want to try and go for that. Um, but it, it, there's so many different factors that can influence patronage. So it's almost we, we can invest in low fares and we believe that will provide a level of change in, in patronage and grow the network overall. Because of the pandemic, it's been really difficult to model that and, and you know, work out exactly. So when we originally, I mean, this project was conceived probably about three years ago, pre-pandemic, and it was quite ambitious in growing patronage that, you know, it was about 15, 20% patronage growth was expected. But of course, where we are now, we've got to recover patronage to where we were pre-pandemic, and then we've got to add to it. So, you know, that's the, the challenge at the moment. But the other thing, so 
there's things we can do on the public transport network, there's things we can do on rail. So we've got bus patronage, we've got rail patronage that we need to shift uh, and grow. Um, and, and then you've got, uh, uh, as we've talked about, um, you know, the, the push me mechanisms that, you know, that there's lots of carrots, but we need to have some sticks as well. So if you start to look longer term, and, and again, this is where we need to think, where, where is government policy going? Are we going to get to a system of road pricing? You know, particularly with electric cars, what are we going to do with fuel duty? All of that, you know, how is that whole arena going to evolve and change? Because the, the basic fact of the matter is that still, you know, once you own a car, you jump in it and use it and you don't see the costs. And until you start to see those costs more, it's going to be very challenging. But if we move to a, a, a more road, you know, a road price system, that will start to push and influence. And, and I think the younger generation coming through as well, you know, they, they are not as um, committed to car use, I think, as perhaps some of the other generations have. Um, you know, insurance costs are very high. Obviously, petrol costs are really high now. So, so the younger people, it's, it's how can we influence them? Um, so a lot of the work over the next four years in terms of fares is going to be looking at, you know, the young people, you know, they're our future users in effect. How do we get them embedded in public transport and living their lives around public transport? Because a lot of us, we, we end up um, buying a car and then you plan your life around the car. And what we need people to do is actually um, plan their life around public transport more um, in, in the future if we're going to keep those users um, throughout their life. So, so there's lots of challenges, but there's lots of opportunities as well, I think. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, uh, Penny, I think you are next. Um, have you got a question? Yes, uh, several people have said that bus services in their area no longer operate. So, you know, however cheap the fare, I mean, it's brilliant what, what you're doing and the whole strategy is, is great but there are places where the bus is no longer going like um uh Porcelain, i think or and pray sands the buses that used to call there aren't calling there anymore no but a different one is so well a different I, one, one there, is there was a gap because there hasn't been a bus to okay okay yeah. so so there's some real challenges um, that, that we have. Um, and, you know, we, we've been through the pandemic. Um, we put in a new tender in the March as the pandemic hit two years ago. Um, and in that tender, we put in a lot of new mileage. We, we Cornwall Council committed to putting more mileage in um, with a view of seeing, you know, Will they grow patronage? Will they actually start to encourage more use? Obviously, the pandemic has hit. We've had two years of government funding. So government has sat behind the bus industry and funded it so that services did not get cut. Um, but that, that funding is now coming to an end. It will end in totality in October this year. And so we have had to start looking at the network um, and look at the recovery rates of different routes across the network. Um, and we do have to accept that we need to reshape some things because some demand has changed. Um, people aren't doing what they were doing previously. You know, people aren't going to work five days a week. Um, a lot of people are working at home. Um, people aren't going out in the evening. So evening services have been really badly impacted. Uh, but, but journeys have changed. So demand has changed. Um, and I was talking to GWR recently because we've got one route um, up in Gunnys Lake, for example, where that we've simply got nobody using the service. Um, and so we've had to reduce the frequency on it because when you compare it to other similar services, patronage has come back. But on this particular one, it simply isn't there. There's not enough people using it. So we've got to make sure that our resources are best used to give the best value and, and to get the most people moving. Um, so because demand has changed, because we do need to relook at the network, we need to reshape the network based on what 
what people are doing now post pandemic, that there are going to be some changes um, to, to the network. Now, at the tender, I do know about press and, you know, we did put a, a new route in because um, First Kerno didn't use to serve Prayer Sands. Um, we've just agreed that First Kerno will now serve Prayer Sands. Um, and so we've actually taken the opportunity to, to remove the other route because it was a bit of duplication. Um, so that's what's happened there. So there will be some, some network changes. Mm -hmm. um, our, our absolute aim is to minimise this to, you know, it, we do not want to take services away at all, but but there are going to be some cases where they simply can't be justified mm -hmm. because of the demand. Yeah, um, and how, how do you thought about having the smaller sort of uh, hopper type buses? All right. We get a lot of questions about this. So um, in Cornwall, I transport 14,000 children to school every day and they, have to be transported on double deck vehicles largely some single but a lot of double deck vehicles so our bus network is we, we utilize it for the school transport as well as general service mm -hmm. um, so that largely dictates the fleet um, and, and the size of buses that we use um, and, and that's just because that's the most cost effective way of, of getting our transport as, as cheaply as possible um, to, to get the provision in place um, so a lot of people say, why can't we have smaller buses? Um, smaller buses aren't really as effective. They've got the same cost, but they can't carry the number of people. So it, it's down to the basic economics. We, we need to carry as many people as we can on the services. Um, and, and usually if there's a larger bus in place, it's because that bus is doing school runs in that local area at the beginning and end of the day. Um, so, you know, obviously in places like Mausel, we do have the very small bus because nothing else will get down there. But where we can fit a larger vehicle, our preference is very much to, to fit a larger vehicle because it just gives us greater flexibility. Um, and a lot of buses move around. They'll do one route and then they'll go on to another route and then they'll do a school route and then they'll go. So, so they do do a lot of different things throughout the day. Again, that's the way we, we drive efficiency of, of the network. Well, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Mel. Stephen Reynolds, did you want to answer a question? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. I can't, my video is not working, so you'll have to just listen to me, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's following up on what Penny said. I like Penny, I'm a Penzance Town Councillor, and I've had a lot of um, feedback from residents this last week in Haymore, where I live just outside Penzance, on uh, cuts to bus services, changes to routes, so the village is only served once every hour rather than every half hour, mm. and some of the routes have changed and are following very strange routes. What I, and also uh, they don't always dovetail in with the train services arriving at Penzant Railway Station, particularly in the evenings. So I'm wondering, do you have any mechanism or scope for arranging meetings locally with local councils like ours? to discuss feedback from users when you do change routes or indeed in advance of changing routes so that uh, obviously you've got your financial constraints but also local residents have been particularly those residents who aren't digitally aware and we have a lot mm -hmm. in our neighborhood who, are, who aren't digitally aware uh, and rely on the paper timetables and suddenly they've gone out of date and they didn't know it was happening so um, do you have colleagues or do you yourself have you know, kind of local meetings where we can um, talk through these various issues and work out whether there are individual routes that could be tweaked uh, in both our interests? That's what I'm trying to say, really. Yeah. Um, so I'm currently looking at how we can better engage. I, I only have a very small team. Um, and so I can't promise to engage with, with everybody across Cornwall. What I'm trying to do is make better use of obviously our, our councillors. So the, the Cornwall councillors we've committed. So I did a briefing um, in January to them um, in terms of this is where we are. This is how we operate. This is, these are, because there's big service changes in April that we've just gone through and the next big one is September. So we'll be we're, we're now planning for September um, and what we need to do with the network, with the return to schools and, and the wide, any wider network changes. So, so there's two times a year that, that the big changes are made. Um, I, 
So, so we, we're looking to, to put in extra meetings with the, the, with the Cornwall councillors, um, but we also can make use of the community network groups. Um, and, you know, I, I do urge people to, to, to write to us, contact my team. Um, you know, if you go online, you can see the email address um, that, that you can always send feedback to. Um, and, and yes, if there are particular things that you want to talk to, then yes, we can we can set something up. Um, and, and I know that, that there's been a number of issues down, down in Penzance, so that would be one the way where, yes, we, we could potentially talk to you and, and understand the challenges um, that, that you and, and other councillors are facing down there. Okay, thank, think, thanks, for, thanks very much, Mel. That's great. The, one, one thing I, I, I have to be honest with you about is, um, it's a mixture of commercial changes. So commercial changes are commercially sensitive and hence confidential. Um, and therefore we can't share a, a lot of information in advance, um, but I'm looking at how we can improve the communication um, so that um, we know which areas may be affected um, and, and can start to improve the comms around that um, going forward. So I am trying to draw up a plan to, to get better comms out there. Okay, thanks very much. Cheers. Wonderful. Um, uh, John, John James, do you want to ask your question? Yes, um, I've got, you've answered my question on double decker buses. Um, I've got two others. So, um, first of all, will, will bus services be a lot more frequent? Because one of the uh, things that you find when you go to a city like London is if you miss a bus, it doesn't matter. Another one's coming very shortly. Here, it seems to be every half hour, every hour or whatever, which it makes it less convenient than having a car. That's the first question. And secondly, have you got enough drivers if you are going to make them more frequent? Because uh, uh, we've heard of stories of drivers becoming HGV drivers and this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to cost to get the drivers uh, with the relative um, skills and um, professionalism to come back to transport. Yeah. So I'll pick up on the driver issue first. We are facing a real crisis, um, both nationally, but specifically in Cornwall, um, because of obviously housing um, uh, and, you know, drivers simply can't afford to live in Cornwall, um, just like many other, um, other sectors um, that, that are largely low paid. Um, so we do have a real challenge with drivers and we've, we've had... So, so there's driver issues because we had the HGV shortage, therefore what drivers were available are paid a lot more money to go and drive a HGV compared to bus. Um, so we've had all that to deal with and we continue to, uh, our two main operators are recruiting all the time for drivers. They are doing fairs in our local towns to try and get people to think about driving. They're, they're often much more flexible working patterns. They're trying everything they can to try and encourage people to drive in. But when you've got McDonald's paying 13 pound an hour um, and people can just go and do that, you know, we just can't compete with, with some of the other industries. Um, so, so we've got that, but we've also obviously had COVID um, and, and COVID hasn't gone away. And actually in the last two months, we've actually had some of the worst sickness rates throughout the whole pandemic in Cornwall. So that has led to more lost mileage, more services being canceled. And I'm conscious the public are now getting quite weary about COVID excuses, but the reality is it, it has still been there um, and we have struggled. We, we haven't got enough drivers in the system, so we can't cover sickness. And so that has led to some severe issues and, and those are not going away anytime soon in terms of the driver shortages. In terms of the frequency question, I would absolutely love to put more frequencies on. And, and that was part of what the bus, bus service improvement plan was about. It's all about the national bus strategy. We asked for eight million pounds revenue a year extra so that we could totally uplift the bus network in Cornwall. And we've not been given that. We've been given four million over the next three years. We asked for eight million a year to enable us to uplift buses. So yes, we want to do that, but we simply can't afford to do that at this stage. Um, what we want to do through the bus fares pilot is look at where do we see the most demand based on the lower fares. And then we will use the BSIP funding to try and enhance certain services 
to demonstrate that if you do that, you do get patronage growth, you get better um, customer satisfaction, people want to buy into Boss. And then by doing that, proving that point on, on a couple of services, we can then make the case for wider investment uh, beyond that. But again, it all comes down to money at the end of the day. Um, I, I'd, I'd love nothing else but to put extra frequency on, on our network. Um, but at the moment, we, we just can't, can't afford it. Um, so it's about understanding where, where, where is our priorities going to be for, for, for next year uh, and which services can we afford to uplift based on the government funding we've been now given. Did Thank that answer? Was there anything else? Uh, Did, no. No, you answered the other question on double deckers earlier. Brilliant. Thank you. Well, have we just got time for there's two questions left? Have we got time, Beth? Can we overrun a little? Um, yeah, Gina, yeah. Gina, would you like to ask your question? Yes, thank you. Yeah, mine's quite a quick question, actually. Um, it's about dogs. Um, now, of course, many, many people come down to Cornwall and they bring their dogs with them. And of course, this is a barrier to them using public transport and buses. I was just wondering if there's any kind of initiative or policy from the council to try to encourage the, the bus operators to allow dogs and perhaps promote it a bit more, especially, you know, manageable dogs, of course, on their buses. Do you know, I don't, I, I think you can take dogs on the buses um, and I think different operators might charge just in Yeah, use. I was just thinking, you know, perhaps it could be promoted because I think, you know, people just find it so easy and comfortable just to, to take their dog in the car yeah. rather than, right. you know, okay. it's just something to think about. That's all. What we want to try and look at how we market more tourists to use the service, so we might be able to include that in that, yeah. in that element. Yeah, okay, okay, no worries. I've got one quick question from the chat, and um, before we call Maggie, and um, I just and um, Annie has just asked if there are any reduction for pensioners in the prices. So pensioners get your concessionary card, so you travel for free already. Hopefully you've got a concessionary card if you're over, I think it's 67 now, you can apply for a free concessionary card. Great, that was a quick one. And then Maggie, do you want to ask the question? Um, mine's more a plea really that um, if, uh, if, if there were a, a possibility of, of tying buses in with bikes, it would be really good. Um, I don't think there's bikes on buses anywhere and um, except folding bikes, I believe. Um, but um, I'm trying to avoid using a car. So I bought myself an e-bike, which is wonderful. Um, I live 10 miles south of Helston. So I often cycle into Helston to get to a train though. I'd like to put my bike on a train. I have to go to Camborne or, or Truro or Penzance or Red Roof. They're all about the same distance. It's quite a long way. Um, it would be great to put a bike on a bus sometimes and then use it at the other end of your train journey. The other, the other thing is, um, could, could I make a plea while we've got you here, Mel, that um, you tell your drivers to be considerate to cyclists. Um, it really is nasty when, and, and buses are going faster than they used to, um, when a double-decker bus goes by mm -hmm. a cyclist, it sucks you in. And I think we're all in the same game. We're trying to reduce carbon emissions. So could you, could you, could you educate them, please? Could they slow down, perhaps move out a bit, you know, wait until the road allows them to move out a bit. It, it really is dangerous. Uh, it's this thing I, I, I like least about cycling on a, on a relatively busy road is when a double-decker bus comes by. Thank yeah. you. No, I, I, I do agree. And we, we can build that in. We, we're hoping to do some more driver training with the operators. Um, so, yes, absolutely. Because, again, you know, one of our wider aims is sustainability. So walking, cycling and public transport. So that that works perfectly with, with the wider agenda. Um, in terms of a bike on a bus, um, we were about to do a trial when COVID hit. So we have got plans to trial it. And we just, because of everything else that has gone on, we just haven't been able to get that across the line. So, so watch this space. We, we, we do want to do that. And Go Cornwall Boss, our, our main tended operator, is going to work with us on that. 
Um, and we've also got aspirations for um, better hubs, like um, more integrated hubs. Um, so you have bus stops, cycle, car charging, um, charge of mobile phone, all that sort of stuff. Again, that, that went into our BSIP. Um, and, and just with our new local transport plan, we, we're trying to work together in terms of how could we pilot something um, like that. So, so we get that more integrated approach um, in, in things. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely, bikes on buses. We, we want to do a pilot. Uh, we just need to come up for air and, and work out how do we do this and how do we get it across the line. So we, we've not lost it. So what, watch this space. Okay. Thanks, Mel. Um, Beth, are, are you going to wind this up? Have we, have we answered all the questions yet? I think there's one more. Um, uh, Karen and... Um, people in the chat as well but do you want to ask your question quickly and then we can wrap up yes thank you um melanie you mentioned in one of the slides it says that the buses are carbon neutral and i was wondering how that is and whether you're moving towards electric buses and as i put in the chat there's a really inspiring podcast of a city in china that's running sixteen thousand electric buses <laughs> No, I've been to Shenzhen, not, not since I've been doing that, but yes, it's really quite amazing what China have done there. Um, so, so I have seen this, it, it's brilliant. Um, so our buses, we, they're, they're not carbon neutral, but they are Euro 6, so the cleanest diesel buses there are out there. And, and that is far cleaner than a Euro 6 car, for example. So, so the bus industry has done far more than the car industry in terms of cleaning up its diesel based vehicles. So, so, so that is a positive. We've also got um, the youngest fleet, tendered fleet in the country. So our tendered fleet is on average age of two years old um, and the wider network as a whole is um, under four years old. Um, and in the city regions, you know, the average is six, seven, eight years. So we are doing massively better than many other areas um, in, in the UK. So that's a big tick. Um, yes, in terms of electrification or hydrogen. So obviously we're a rural authority. We're a rural authority on a peninsula. Um, we're quite hilly um, and we're quite dispersed. So there's some real challenges in us moving to fully electric um, or, or even whether electric is the right answer. So we have done a big piece of work recently that is looking at the challenges with that um, and how would we go about it. Um, so we're not going to be able to proceed immediately. It is going to be a longer term plan. But yes, we, we are doing that thinking now. Um, there's still quite a lot of things that are outside our control that need to fall into place before we jump one way or another, because it could be hydrogen, but for Cornwall, it, it could be electric. There, there are some real challenges with electric, with the way our fleet works, the topography and, and, and everything else, and, and even just getting the power. Um, so it's not going to be quick, but we are... It, work is going on in the background around what how do we deliver this how do we achieve this um so yes watch this space but i'm not going to be able to say we'll get electric buses in the next five years because that isn't going to happen i'd hope to be, again as part of our bsip we did make the case that we would want to trial it um, at a particular location with a particular fleet uh, we haven't been successful in securing that money. We continue to do the work in the background and we'll continue to bid for opportunities, but it'll be very much, we need to test it, we need to pilot it, we need to learn those lessons, then that will inform how, how would you roll that out. So it's some way away, I'm afraid. But in the meantime, we've got the cleanest diesel we can, we can get. Okay. Thank you. It's very interesting. Thank you so much, Mel. Um, it's been really interesting to hear and very thorough um, and for answering all of our questions. Um, I'm sure we've all been inspired to uh, get out on the buses and to encourage friends and family to do the same. Um, yeah, we'll uh, yeah, say goodbye now. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And we'll, um, uh, we'll send out an email, but the next Climate Focus is going to be on the 19th of May. Um, at the same time, and we'll send out invitations for that soon. Brilliant. Lovely to meet you, everyone. Thank you, Mel. Thank, Thank you, Beth. You. Bye.